Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Dragon Ball Nation. Now today I got you guys my top 5 Dragon Ball Z games. Uh, it's my personal favorite. I know I haven't done a uh, top 5, top 10 list in a couple of months probably, but I've been super busy with this channel guys. But here it is basically, let's get right into it. Number 5, don't hate me for it, alright? Don't hate me. I'm gonna pick a Battle of Z and let me tell you why. As a competitive game, it's not necessarily anything special but as comp a cooperative game it's something quite phenomenal now the reason I'm putting it this uh, number five rather than a couple of other games is it really was when I played with my buddy Phil we would have so much fun with this game man I know it wasn't a deep fighter at all not even close but uh, if you play this game competitively or uh, solo, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, but I think that a lot of the things that this game had in it, they did right. Uh, and without this game, we wouldn't really have Xenoverse uh, come out the way it is. Uh, Xenoverse does take a couple things from Battle of Z, so, I mean, it kind of does, it's a good thing the game was made. But I really enjoyed it. It had a lot of uh, depth, not in the combat, obviously, because it was a one button uh fighter it wasn't even really a fighter fighting game you could call it an arcade game I think that's what rhyme style calls it as an arcade game and I can see why he says that but it had a lot of customization with the uh, card system you could collect a bunch of cards and put stat bonuses on your characters and all that and uh, it was just really fun really fun game uh, it had a lot of replay value for me and that's why I'm putting it at this spot coming in at number four we have Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1 uh, the footage you're seeing is recorded from the HD collection. Actually, the footage that you saw for, uh, had to take a breath there. <laughs> the footage you saw for Battle Z was actually taken from the demo because I no longer owned the game. <laughs> I rented it from Gamefly for like a couple months and played the hell out of that game, got to like level 400 something. Uh, but yeah, I had to use demo footage because I didn't have the game on hand. But uh, I knew that I <laughs> knew the game good enough to give you guys my opinion and all that. But yeah, this isn't about Battle Z anymore. It has passed. <laughs> Budokai 1. The reason this game's getting number 4 is because those cutscenes in that game, guys, are so phenomenal. That game made, I think, a lot of our childhoods. Uh, if you're like me, 18 to 20 year old guy, that game made your childhood. I had it back on the GameCube, I remember pretty clearly. Uh, the gameplay itself back in the day was pretty phenomenal, but now going back to it, it's a little bit stale. There's uh, not really that many combos. Uh, you need to end a combo with a special. To use a special, you need to end a combo with a special. But those cutscenes, man, those cutscenes bring some nostalgia. And there's a lot of things I love about that game. I come back to play that game still. I don't, I don't necessarily know why. It's definitely got problems, but I enjoy it very, very much. I'm not entirely sure why. It had some nice what if missions in it, like uh, what if it had like Frieza getting his immortality, and it had a uh, cell had a nightmare scene in it you guys can look that up on YouTube if you want to see his nightmare scene if you haven't seen it already it's pretty funny actually but yeah it had a lot of good things about it back in the day like I said and um, you know it really made Dragon Ball Z games popular here in North America and Europe I guess but it really was the start of all the uh, later DBZ games and why without it we wouldn't really be the same would it uh, so that's why I'm putting it here it's got this, such a nostalgic effect to it but I mean, if it wasn't so nostalgic, it probably wouldn't be on the list because it's got a couple problems with it. But I think it's a great game, and if you uh, enjoy, you want to play it, definitely I suggest getting the Budokai HD collection because that's a phenomenal uh, HD remake. Even though the music's different, uh, it is a great HD remake of Budokai 1 and Budokai 3. Now at number 3, we have Raging Blast 1 and Raging Blast 2. Now I tried really hard to pick between the two. Uh, which one to put on the list. I just decided to put on both of them because I didn't want to make like, you know, number four one of them and number three the other. I wanted to keep them both together. Uh, and I had my reason. Raging Blast 1 had, you know, uh, more watered, I can't say watered down gameplay because it was before Raging Blast 2, but the gameplay wasn't as good as Raging Blast 2 necessarily. But Raging Blast 2 was far too easy in my opinion uh, to pretty much own any of the computers in that game uh, versus another story. The competitive multiplayer was pretty fun in that. Uh, better than the first ones, but the graphics in the first game are far superior, I uh, think. And Raging Blast 2, a lot of the characters look like uh, toys, actually. I think they look like plastic action figures. Uh, I mean, the animations uh, that they, you know, express are great in both games, but 
I think it's just something to do with the shaders and the textures in the first game made it look better. But the second game's got the edge on gameplay and all that and content. Uh, the first one's got like 40 plus characters, which is you know a healthy enough roster. I like that. But Raging Blast 2's got over 60, and I mean it's got the edge there with content. Uh, the story mode, it doesn't have a story mode uh, necessarily, it's got that galaxy mode which is a series of fights, there is no story really. Uh, the first one's got a pretty killer story mode with a whole saga based on what is. So if you want to see that, definitely get the first one, but I'd say get both of them, they're not too expensive. You can probably pick them both up for $40 for the pair. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good, uh, those two games are pretty good. I decided to put those on this list instead of Tenkaichi 3 because I never played Tenkaichi 3 too much when it was in its prime, I played it afterwards and I mean... I just prefer the style of Raging Blast 2. I mean, I know it's pretty much the same game, but I just prefer the way they feel. Uh, the animations are better. Uh, I think it's just more a uh, balanced fighter in general, because there's a lot of cheap tricks in Tank Heist 3. I know a lot of you are going to hate me for that, but, you know, please <laughs> let me have my opinion. Don't hate on me too much. Now, coming in at number 2, we're getting down to that number 1 mark. We've got Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit. This is one of my personal, obviously it's number two, it's one of my personal favorite Dragon Ball Z games. And the main reason is, uh, you know, it was the first one on the 360 and PS3, the first Dragon Ball Z game we had. So it was very exciting to get our hands on it. Granted, it only went for the Cell Saga, but the graphics are still untouched, man. Those graphics are so beautiful in that game, as you can see from the footage. And they had some good cutscenes in that game for the story mode. Uh, granted, they're not as good as Budokai 1 cutscenes, but they're pretty close. Uh, some of them are a little bit lackluster, but they're better than what we get in Tenkaichi and Raging Blast for cutscenes, definitely. Uh, but the gameplay itself, there's so many defensive opportunities, and there's so much depth to the combat. Um, not as much depth as number one, but we'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> they got a lot of depth in the combat, they got some nice combos, there's a lot of defensive opportunities, there's teleporting, uh, you can use your key to block all damage from attacks, and you gotta manage your key well. Uh, there's no key charging, but there's a nice system where it will uh, auto-fill your key uh, at a relatively decent speed. It's a pretty balanced uh, fighting game. There's only like 21 characters or so, but they're all pretty balanced, and they all feel very distinctive. Uh, like I said before, it only goes with the Cell Saga, but I could tell Dimps needed more time developing this game because they had other content in there that was cut out, as you can see from some of the... Uh, cutscenes that are shown inside of the game uh, when you finish a saga it'll do like a fast forward to other sagas and it'll show content like Mecha Frieza and other such uh, things like that Super Saiyan 2 Goku versus Broly that's not in the game neither is Mecha Frieza but I mean it's just a great game uh, there's just it's flashy as hell it's probably the it feels the most like a Dragon Ball Z game uh, like the anime of any Dragon Ball Z in my opinion it's super fast gameplay uh, as smooth as butter animations too but that's basically it for burst limit just a fantastic game and if you haven't played it i highly suggest you pick it up it's like 20 bucks definitely do that dragon ball z budokai 3 is the definitive dbz game for me at this time granted xenoverse isn't out but i'll get to that at the end of the video budokai 3 has some of the funnest it is probably my favorite fighting game of all time I know many of you enjoy the game as well. Uh, I say more people probably enjoy Tenkaichi 3, but I don't think that's as balanced and fair as a fighter. Now, the way I judge my fighting games, I know I love DBZ to death, and I try not to have it cloud my judgment when I look at a game. Um, but the amount of characters we have here is about 41, but they're all distinctive, uh, not quite as distinctive as Bursamon, but they all have their own attacks. There's no throwaway attacks. They all have their own unique combos. And the combo system itself is phenomenal. Uh, you can juggle your enemies and all that in the air. And if you use the same attack over and over and you're not letting your enemy you know, get back on the ground to fight you, your damage is, your damage is going to do less and less because uh, you're just using a cheat tactic and you need to mix up your combos if you want to keep that damage maximized. And it really has a lot of experimentation. I think it's been, uh, there's over 60 combos per character or something like that. That's what was advertised. I mean, I haven't gone in and tried to find 60 for each character. But I've gotten to the point where you can spend, you can, I can spend time with each character and learn all their combos. Um, you know, the forward, back, punch, kicks, all that stuff. Quarter, quarter, quarter circle, quarter circle, quarter circle, uh, square. Wow, I'm tripping over my words. I was trying to make a Street Fighter reference, and I absolutely failed right here in front of you guys. But, you know, Dimps comes from Street Fighter, so I was kind of trying to make a reference there. <laughs> 
But yeah, this game's absolutely phenomenal. The HD collection, uh, the version you've seen for you is the HD one, but it's a very good version, 60 frames per second, all that good stuff. Unfortunately, they never added any online functionality, which is really disappointing. I love the uh, competitive side to Budokai 3. It's a very balanced fighter. Um, you guys really, if you haven't played that game, you're living under a rock and you're missing out sorely. This game is phenomenal. The skill system, you can level up your character like an RPG. Uh, if you want, if you're looking forward to Xenoverse and haven't played Budokai 3, Budokai 3 will give you a nice taste of what you're looking forward to in Xenoverse, definitely. So I highly suggest it. If you haven't picked it up, definitely go right now. Leave your house, uh, get in the car, whatever you need to do. Ask your mom for money. <laughs> but yeah, guys, you know what it is. <laughs> The game's awesome. If anyone denies that, they're just blowing shit out their ass. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching this video so much. Uh, I know my opinion's going to be completely different from yours, probably since Tenkaichi 3 wasn't on here and all. Just wasn't a huge, never really grabbed me as much as everyone outside. You guys are going to hate me fat properly, but you know, it's my opinion and I'm going to you know, speak my mind. I'm not afraid to. If you guys are going to hate me for that, that's just fine. If you're going to hate me for something stupid like that, I don't even want you around this channel. But, enough of that. Enough of that negative talk. Budokai 3 was number one, as I said before, and that game is absolutely phenomenal. But, this is the outro, I guess. So, uh, if you're new around here, <laughs> subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy content such as this and Xenoverse you know, if you're looking forward to Xenoverse at all, definitely subscribe. I do Dragon Ball Theory videos and, you know, what if topics and some big discussions on a weekly basis. So check me out if you're interested in that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button. Um, now, the reason Xenoverse wasn't really mentioned too much in this video is because obviously Xenoverse isn't out, so I couldn't really talk about it in a fair manner. But when Xenoverse is released, I will give you guys my full in depth review. It'll probably be like half an hour, who knows? I'm gonna completely gush about that game I'm sure because that game is gonna be the absolute shit uh, that game man I wish I could just play more of that probably just <laughs> I don't even know oh wow but yeah that's basically been it guys um, I guess I'll catch you guys later <laughs>